for boolean and we'll call it has emissive and we'll leave the default value off but if we had an emissive map uh, plugged in in our emissive parameter and we came over to our switch parameter and turned it on our emissive map would show up and it would bring the instruction count up a little bit but right now we're just going to leave it off so that just uh, pretty much just enables certain maps it's like a true or false type thing so we have that going for us and now we want to add in uh, UV functionality so we'll go ahead and do that we'll just grab a coordinate and a texture coordinate and we'll call this one uh, no we can't call it anything but we'll multiply it by a scalar parameter and we'll call this one UVs, UV scale put that in the parameter name and we'll give it a default value of 1 so if we want to change our UVs up, if we have like a tiling material or something like that, we can just go in here and change this to 2 and it will tile it by 2. So that's really easy to do and we'll plug it into our diffuse, our emissive, our spec, and our normals. And that will affect all of them. All right, another thing that I like to do is give my emissive map a bit more functionality it's because uh, one thing I want to do is add an, an emissive rim light and we're going to have to restructure our emissive uh, expression to enable us to control whether or not we want that rim light or that emissive map uh, while still maintaining uh, a decent design workflow. So uh, what I'm going to do here is create uh, a little network here and I'm going to use the diffuse that we have so the diffuse map is going to be the, the base for our rim light so to do rim light uh, the standard practice is to bring out a linear interpolate node and you take your diffuse map and you plug that into slot A and you multiply your diffuse map by your emissive light uh, strength or intensity. So we'll give it a default value of 3 and we'll call this rim light intensity. And that usually goes into slot B and we use the Fresnel term to create that rim light effect and we will use our normal map for the normal input for a Fresnel expression and don't forget to plug your texture coordinates back in so if we were to replace our emissive map with our rim light, you'll notice that we get a nice rim light going around the edges. So now that I think of it, if we leave our diffuse at its base value for our emissive, it's just going to turn our entire texture emissive anyways. So what we actually need to blend in by is uh, not our diffuse map, but actually just zero. So we'll bring out a constant, and we'll leave it at zero, and we'll plug that in the slot A. And that really gives us our rim light here. So there's a couple different expressions we could add to our Fresnel term to give it uh, our rim light a little bit more control and to do that uh, one thing we might want to add is a power or not a P 
canner, a power, and we'll call this Fresnel power. And we'll give it a default value of 2. It's just so when we plug it in, you can see what happens. What it does is it kind of tightens up that Fresnel map. And it's the exact same thing as the exponent right here. If we leave that at 1 and we use this power right here, it just acts the exact same way. So if we shift it to 3, it would be the same thing as plugging in 3 in this exponent. And the reason we don't do that is because you can't access the exponent of a Fresnel expression in a material instance. So we have to add it in with a scalar parameter ourselves. And another thing that we could do is, sorry, let's plug that back down here. Uh, another thing that we could do is give it a bias. which is a, a little bit harder to do. To do that, we have to simply add another scalar parameter in here. And we'll call it uh, Fresnel bias. Stick to something really original there. And we'll give it a default value of zero. And uh, this Fresnel bias is going to be between negative 0.5 and 5, and 0.5, positive 0.5. Uh, so, the, uh, I mean, we'll be able to go further than that in the engine, or in the in the static static uh, static instance uh, material. Sorry, I'm like stumbling over my words here. Uh, but this comment will just tell us that you're supposed to stick between negative 5 and 0.5 for it to work properly. And lastly, so we don't blow out our expression, uh, we're going to have to clamp it. So we'll go to utilities and we'll bring out a constant clamp. And the reason we clamp this is simply enough is because we don't want the value going into our alpha expression to go below 0 or above 1. We just want it to stay in between a 0 and 1 value, or uh, it's going to start to screw up the linear interpolate node. So what this bias does is if I subtract like 0.2, notice how it actually kind of pulls that rim line closer to the edges. And if we do a full 0.5, it goes out even more. And I mean, we could even push it a little bit by going to like 0.7 or negative 1. That'll completely kill it. But uh, if we leave it at zero, uh, what what it does is is if we give it a really high power like ten, it gets it gets really tight. But if we want to bring that tightness or that fall off closer, like towards the center of the sphere, we could give it like a point two, and it just kind of it just brings that emiss emissiveness like. It just it just makes it brighter pretty much. So it it really just kind of blows it out a little bit. So it's best to use it with a a reasonable power like four or three. And we could just use this to tighten it up towards the edge a little bit. So we have our Fresnel stuff pretty much finished up. So we'll make some more room. And now we need to uh, figure out a way to combine these so we don't have to choose between just one or the other. And the easiest way to do that is to just add them together.